Welcome to the Potter Blog site, March 12, 2014. Yesterday, the Department of Energy released some documents that we believe provides prima facie evidence that the HEPA filters did not start immediately after the explosion, that they didn't start automatically, that somebody actually had to go out and turn them on, and in that time, a significant portion of radioactive uh, plutonium and americium escaped into the environment. Uh, we believe this data also shows that uh, CERMEC, an organization fu funded by DOE, uh, obfuscated the WIP release data. Uh, basically what we do is we trust the data, but we follow the math to make sure that the story they're telling and the data they release, that mathematically that these things make sense. So it's a, sort of a trust of, but verify. We follow the math. And when there's a uh, the old saying, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Well, if there's deception, it'll show up in the math not making sense. And I believe that's exactly what we have here in this case. So here's the data released by the Department of Energy yesterday. Uh, two charts. One was taken at station A, that's before the HEPA filtration system. The other was taken at station B after the HEPA filtration system. Now what we're going to show you here is that the station A charts show that there was a large release of radioactivity uh, initially in the explosion. But when we look at the station B charts, what you'll see is that the original amount of radioactivity is filtered is less than what was filtered later on in the day. And that's sort of the exact opposite of what it should be. But let's show you that real quick here. So here on the left we have station A. And we have a filter that was installed on February 14th, 7.42 in the morning, and was removed 6.30 in the morning on February 15th. The actual explosion happened February 14th, 11.30 p.m. So this filter, they took a reading, a 10-minute count, and uh, what it averaged out to was 4.4 million disintegrations per minute of alpha radiation. Now if we look over here at filter B, and we look at their first filter reading, and again, this filter reading ran just a little bit longer than the filter A reading. It started 7.54 in the morning on February 14th and ended 8.35 on February 15th. And notice, even though this filter ran longer, this is after the HEPA filter, so the HEPA filter should have removed some of the radioactive material, a good portion. They, uh, after a 10-minute count, they counted 28,205 disintegrations per minute. Now this is from an, uh, almost a 25-hour period that this filter ran. They counted 28,000 uh, disintegrations per minute. Now this filter pulls through approximately 70 cubic feet of uh, 70 cubic meters of air per day, roughly human breathing rate. Now, but let's look at what they were measured next. They removed this filter at 835, they stuck in another filter at 835, and they removed it approximately six hours later, and they got a reading of 36,194 disintegrations per minute. So, the filter that was running at the height of the explosion, which, which unfiltered, gave 4.4 million disintegrations per minute. This filter only detected 28,000 disintegrations per minute at the height of the explosion after a 24-hour run. The next filter put in immediately afterwards, uh, t approximately nine hours after the explosion, that filter was run for an additional six hours and it showed that it absorbed more radioactivity than the original filter. So how could the filter that ran later after the original explosion have more radioactive material captured in it than the filter that ran during the explosion? Well the simple answer to that would be that uh, those HEPA filters weren't turned on during the initial part of the explosion and they weren't turned on until after the big wave of the release occurred. And if we look over here at the Station A data, it's very clear that the biggest release, 4.4 million disintegrations per minute, happened in the first seven hours of the release. The next reading, taken at 6.30 to 8.40, only showed 225,000 uh, uh, disintegrations per minute. 
and that filter reading was taken over a roughly a two hour period uh, the next filter reading was taken uh, from 8.40 in the morning till 3.10 in the afternoon so that would be roughly a seven hour filter rating and so it only showed 28,000 no, sorry 285,000 uh, disintegrations per minute so this thing ran for seven hours and showed 200 that it captured 285,000 disintegrations per minute this one ran two hours and showed 225,000 basically what it's saying is the amount of radiation is rapidly declining with the peak occurring early but here in the HEPA filter we have the exact opposite the peak occurs later and again we believe that provides clear evidence that uh, the HEPA filters did not start automatically and immediately as uh, DOE has claimed now the other thing to notice here and this is where it comes into where it even gets even more uh, the tangled web of mathematics even gets more tangled if you will so you would think that when CERMAC releases this goes through and measures this data what CERMAC does is it, it takes these disintegrations per minute and uh, finds measures how much of it is actually plutonium how much is americium and how much is cesium-137 so forth that they would go through this and make that determination for every one of these filter readings well they pretty much did that for the station A readings over here they, they took these filter readings measured them out but from the station B reading what they did was is they took I believe the first 11 filters and combined them as if they were just one filter reading so they took a filter reading this filter that started at 754 on February 14th and they took all 11 filters and they ended with this one that uh, ended on February 18th at 1655 in the afternoon for uh, which is 455 in the afternoon so let's look quickly at the CERMAC data here's what you'll see here's the station A readings here and you see they give out a breakout for February 14th, 15th, 15th, 16th, 16th, 17th, 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 18th, 18th, 18th. So they broke out the Station A readings pretty good. Gave a detailed insight to what's happening at Station A. But at Station B, they take one reading that started at 7.55 on February 14th and ended at 16.55 on February 18th. Four days. They took four days worth of filters, 11 filters at all, combined them into one reading and took this measurement. So what that does is it doesn't, it, it hides, it obfuscates what actually happened in that filter in terms of plutonium release. Now why this is important, and not only is it hiding the detail that the DOE chart provides, more importantly, it seems as if they're taking this data and they're using it to tell the EPA that nothing bad was released above reportable limits. So what this does is is when you when you spread it out over four days it does exactly that with those readings. As you saw earlier the uh, there was a peak amount of radioactivity and it trailed off but when they break the reading across four days it serves to level load it to make it look like it's a uniform distribution that there was never any peak that it just smoothed out, peanut buttered out over there. So if you would have took that reading at this first filter, the one that uh, was taken immediately after the, uh, the event, maybe it would have shown that it was exceeded. I'm sure if they would have taken a reading, a filter reading an hour after the uh, event, they would have found that uh, a large amount of uh, plutonium was released in excess of what the EPA requirements are.